for this part. Our group G is going to be the product of Z mod 4 with itself under addition. The problem is we want to find the automorphism group of G. Now, Z mod 4 is not a field, so we're moving from finite fields in linear algebra over to commutative rings and module theory. We don't want to use all that machinery, so we're just going to do linear algebra as usual, and we'll have to make sure that our results hold when we have zero divisors. Now, our game plan to find the automorphism group will be the same as before. If I have a phi in the automorphism group, okay, that'll be a map from Z mod 4 across Z mod 4 back to itself. So we'll regard those elements as column vectors with two entries, those entries in Z mod 4. These maps are going to be Z mod 4 linear. And because we need bijections, we'll also be invertible. Now, the linear property holds just by the homomorphism property for the automorphism. So since we're using addition, we'll have that phi of g1 plus g2 is equal to 5g1 plus 5g2. That's going to take care of the additive property for linear. And if we define scalar multiplication on vectors in the natural manner, we'll also get the scalar multiplication property for linear. Then our next step is just to write these linear transformations as matrices. Now, every element of Z mod 4 cross Z mod 4 can be written as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors, so 1, 0, and 0, 1. So if I know where 1, 0, and 0, 1 go, we know the whole automorphism. The recipe, if 1, 0, E1 goes to V1, 0, 1, E2 goes to V2, then if I define the matrix A as the matrix with the columns V1 and V2, our automorphism is just going to be given by phi of xy equals A times the vector xy. We also note here with this definition, we'll carry composition of automorphisms over to multiplication of matrices. Now, the first thing I want to do is to sort out the orders of the elements of our G. So if I had Z mod P cross Z mod P, where P is prime, then every non-zero element in that group has order P. It's not going to be the case here. So we want to sort that out first. Now, just to recall, for Z mod 4, we have 1 squared equals 3 squared equals 1. And then we have 2 times 2 is equal to 0. So 2 is a 0 divisor. Now, in our group G, we're going to have 16 elements. OK, we'll have the identity element 0, 0. Then the way we arrange the rest of the elements, for the elements of order 4, we have 12 of those. We can partition them into three groups. So the idea is going to be, we're going to put the elements together. If, when we multiply by 2, or we add each element back to itself, we get the same element of order 2. So this is going to be useful in getting an upper bound on the order of the automorphism group. To get an upper bound for the number of automorphisms, we note that E1 and E2 are both of order 4 in our group. So there are going to be 12 possibilities for where I can send E1. Okay, I'll call that V1. Instead of 11 possibilities, we'll have only 8 possibilities for where we can send E2. We'll call that V2. So that means we're going to have an upper bound of 96 possibilities for automorphisms. Now note this is just an upper bound because there's no guarantee if we choose like this that we actually get an automorphism. Now, CY8 for V2, if V1 and V2 are from the same group in the partition on our previous board, that means twice V1 is equal to twice V2, okay, an element of order 2. Then 5, 2, 0, okay, is going to be equal to that element of order 2, which is also going to be equal to 5, 0, 2. So that means phi is not 1 to 1, so we don't have an automorphism. Now, 
That means once I pick V1, we've discard everyone else in the group. So that means only eight possibilities for V2. Now, to get the lower bound, we consider a certain subset of our automorphism group. So I want to consider all matrices A, C, B, D, where the determinant of A is equal to one or three. So if I have that condition, then the associated linear transformation, phi sub A, is gonna be an automorphism of our group. Now, this is just linear algebra, okay? If we have A in this form, we have our formula for the inverse of a two by two matrix. We know since the determinant of A is equal to one or three, okay, well, the inverse of determinant A makes sense. Multiplying by minus one is the same as multiplying by three. So everything here is consistent. And we can check that if we just multiply our A by what we're calling A inverse here, okay, we get A times A inverse equals A inverse times A is equal to the identity. So this A here is gonna be a bijection. Using the last board, we could show that the automorphism group acts transitively on the elements of order four. So if we suppose that V1 has order four, going back to the board with a partition, at least one of the coordinates of V1 is a one or a three. Now, I'm gonna use that to construct an automorphism corresponding to a matrix with the determinant equal to one or three. So the one or three is in coordinate one. We'll define A as E1 goes to V1, E2 goes to itself. The determinant of A is a one or a three. If the one or three is in coordinate two, we define A as E1 goes to V1, E2 goes to E1. And again, determinant is one or three. So we see that we can carry E1 to any element of order four by an automorphism, so transitive. Now, let's do some counting. So we wanna use the orbit formula. Now, we're gonna have a group action, so the automorphism group is gonna act on the group itself. We have that the orbit of one zero is the elements of order four. So the number of elements in the orbit of one zero is gonna be equal to the order of the automorphism group divided by the order of the stabilizer of one zero. Now, we know that this item here is a 12, so we wanna figure out what's going on in the stabilizer. If I consider only stabilizing elements with the determinant one or three, so there might be others, well, what's gonna happen? If we're stabilizing one zero, then one zero goes to one zero, so we have to have one zero in the first column. For A and B, I can have anything as long as the determinant is one or three. So that means I can let A be equal to anything. So I have four possibilities. And then B has to be equal to a one or three, which gives me two possibilities. So our stabilizer has order greater than or equal to eight. Now, that means using our formula that the order of the automorphism group it's gonna be greater than or equal to eight times 12 or 96. So we have a lower bound of 96, but that's also an upper bound. So the order of our automorphism group is 96. Not only do we get the number of automorphisms from the previous board, we also have a result on factoring our matrices. So we can factor any matrix coming from aught G into one of these forms. Now, these matrices here are gonna be the stabilizers of one zero. Our matrices here are gonna be those that send E1 to another element of order four and that have determinant equal to one or three. Now, having matrix factorizations is nice, but what we can get from this, using the proc rule for determinant, we have that the determinant of any matrix associated to an automorphism is equal to a one or a three. So that lets us state the automorphism group is isomorphic, the set of two by two matrices with entries in Z mod four, such that the determinant 
is equal to 1 or 3. Now, one last item. If I take the matrices of determinant 1, determinant equal to 3, these are going to have the same order. So I can set up a bijection just by sending any matrix here, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, times A. And then we can undo this by just applying it twice. So these sets split the group, so they each have order 48. Now, the set with determinant A equal to 1 is also going to be a group. So that'll have order 48. We also note if I take automorphism group, we mod out by plus minus the identity matrix, we're going to get another group of order 48. Okay, what's so special about order 48? Well, if we take the symmetries of the cube, okay, we allow for reflections, then that group also has order 48. So, question I haven't worked out yet, is there a connection between one of these groups and the symmetries of the cube? 